Just going to cut off a couple of these ribs. Hello there guys, welcome back to another Kent Survival video. Andy here, out today on a, a drizzly, very muddy day in the woods. <laughs> um, brought up my 66 litre pack and a Dutch oven for this one, so I'm bound to have forgotten something. Um, today I'm going to be doing some Dutch oven barbecue ribs with some buffalo hot wings and it's going to be beautiful. So cue the wood chopping and prep montage. Well, it is raining a bit more now, unfortunately, but um, I've got some birch bark. This is what I collected on my last video, actually, and knowing the weather's pretty wet at the moment and we've had snowfall, which has really soaked everything. Uh, got some grass, which is dry from home. Collected that the other day as well. Some cramp balls, thought I'd use them up. And uh, flint and steel. cramp balls are feeling a little bit um, spongy. They don't seem to be taking a spark, so I'm just going to go with some uh, char cloth for now, just to get things moving.
that's a fire that really didn't want to take. <laughs> we got there off the first lighting, but it took some nannying, I must admit. Like all of this uh, tinder, kindling, whatever you want to call it, is uh, damp and some of that wood was a bit rotten. Even the stuff that was in the uh, wood store over there had gotten a bit wet. I guess all the snow's got in and just sat. But we appear to be on our way now. Right, so I've just put the uh, Dutch oven on to start warming through and so I don't have to put it in cold I'm gonna put in some of this apple juice and I'm gonna go in about half a litre should be alright can always top it up later if need be and just let that warm up We have two racks of ribs here. These look to be cut down spare ribs. They were just labelled as ribs in the supermarket. But what you want to do with ribs is take off this, uh, this skin film on the back here. Best way to do it, from all my experience, is just a butter knife. Run it along the bone of one of the ribs. Doesn't always happen in one, but just so you can just lift it off. And then get yourself some paper towel so you can grip it and then you should be able to tear it off so as I said rarely comes off in one but once you've got it going it's not too difficult and that just gets off that horrible layer of skin which isn't very nice when you're eating it and what I like to do there's many ways to do this people who use margarine or all sorts I like to go in with some mustard sauce with some uh, wet wipes on hand because it's a messy job give them a good slather in like so you're then going to get yourself some uh, soft brown sugar, like a muscovado or something. And you're just going to crumble it all over. And rub that in. Once you've done that, you're then going to grab a spice rub of some sort. This here is onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, a little chilli, a little cumin, salt and pepper. And you're just going to coat them quite liberally. Again, give it a good rub in. The salt starts to draw moisture out of the uh, ribs and get a little stick. And that's one reason for that mustard as well. Make sure everything sticks. And then just flip them and do the other side. the other side done and now we just need to check on that pot one thing I forgot here now you can see that actually boiling way too much so I need to add some more some liquid smoke just to add flavor more of that apple juice that's boiled away and then we're going to add in our ribs and we're going to kind of curve them round so 
so rib one. And if you kind of C shape them together, if that makes sense, it's a good way to fit them in. Now, if possible, you don't want them touching the sides, but they're going to go how they kind of want. And you may have to, if you've got a smaller Dutch oven like this, you may have to tilt them a little. If you can avoid it, have them lower than the lid and they won't stick to it. And to cook them through in all directions, we're going to add a few coals to the top there. Now your ribs this way are going to take around an hour. I'm going to check them on, on them in uh, 40 minutes or so. But yeah, around an hour, depends how you like them and how hot your fire is. So uh, we're going to get on with some other things in the meantime. Now as I said at the beginning, I've got some wings as well as ribs because it's a match made in heaven. Now I've got the whole wings here. Wing is made up of the drum, which is just like your drumstick really, but smaller. Your flat, which has the two bones going through it, and the wing tip as well. There's nothing on that, you don't need that, so you could just get rid of that straight away if you want to. And throw that on the fire. Or use it for a stock or something if you're at home. Uh, if you want to, you can just do them like that, they'll be easier to split up afterwards. Or you can just cut them down, find where that bone is, and cut it down. So then you've got your flat separate and your drum there as well. Now you can um, marinate these in all kinds of ways. Um, if I was frying them I'd be buttermilking them, that sort of thing. Um, but today I'm just going to put some oil on them and spice them. So as I said we're just going to drizzle a little oil on these, not too much. Get that rubbed in, lose a wing, <laughs> and then with one hand clean, one dirty, we're just going to coat them with some of that spice. Same spice as on the, uh, the ribs over there. Don't have to go too mad because I'm going to sauce these as well. Just get a little flavour in there to begin. You do the rest of them and then we'll uh, get them on in a bit. Now I've not been paying too much attention to time here, so I'm going to have a little look at these ribs, see how they're getting on. Not too bad, we've got our bones starting to pull back there. Now you can, flip them. And it makes things a little more even but uh, we seem to be doing okay here. You can kind of check for tenderness if you want to but uh, we've got some time left. I've probably been going half hour I guess. I just lifted the Dutch oven a little bit off of the uh, fire there because it was a bit raging. Now with my tiny pot, which um, I'm going to do a video about this and a few other pots that I've actually got, but that's in the future. For now what we're going to do is just make a bit of a barbecue sauce. This isn't an exact recipe or anything, I've made a lot of barbecue sauces in my time. And uh, this one's going to be a tomato ketchup base. Just need enough to do the uh, ribs in. Put a touch of that mustard in. Some liquid smoke. This one is a hickory one. I usually put proper chipotles in, but I've got some Cholula chipotle sauce to stick in there on this occasion. Do you like the chipotle? 
Got some Worcestershire sauce, Liam Perrins. Some more of that spice rub. Probably put plenty of that in, to be honest. Small glug of Jack Daniels. Bit of a bourbon barbecue sauce here. Something that's essential for me is molasses, so I've got it in its kind of solid form here. So, a bit of molasses there. And I'm also going to stick in some of that brown sugar that we used earlier as well. Seeing as we have it, I'm going to put in some of that apple juice as well. And that's because this is going to boil down a little bit, especially with them sugars in there. Just going to give that a little bit of a stir. I'm just going to put that, not too hot, because we don't want it to burn, put that by the fire there. In a separate little bowl here I'm going to crumble in some blue cheese. And this is going to go with our buffalo wings. Use any blue cheese really, a creamier one is probably better. And some sour cream. This is why a creamier one is easier than a crumbly one. Now I'm just going to put our wings over the fire in some foil, nice and flat in there. And that's just going to slow cook them to begin with and then we'll just uh, grill them afterwards. Our ribs are doing really well. I might pull them off the fire and just leave them in the residual heat of the Dutch oven until we want to sauce them and set that sauce on the grill over the fire. So I'm not rushing when it comes to it. I've got some butter in this small pan here. A load of Frank's red hot sauce. Kind of has to be Frank's. And some more of that Worcestershire. And that is our buffalo sauce. Let's just go on the fire when I'm grilling up the uh, wings. This time now, get these out the foil. You'll see how they've begun cooking. And we're just going to finish them off on the grill here, to load that up. I'll grab the spatula in a minute. May have to rake out some of this just so we've got coals and not flame. And we're going to do the same with our ribs. Should have some tongs, I told you I forgot something. Oh, we've lost one to the fire. <laughs> so I'll pull some of them coals down here. And we'll get them ribs on. There is some heat there. So I'm just going to rake out some of them coals a bit. So we don't burn anything. So just going to grab that barbecue sauce which has been bubbling away. We're going to sauce these bad boys up. See how it's coming off the bone there. Just sauce them up and we'll let that residual heat from the fire kind of set that sauce for us. You can do both sides if you want, I only tend to do the top. and we'll get a little bit of a crust going on them. And you can keep the rest for a uh, dipping if you want. I've got that rough spatula that I did the other day up here. So 
we can just move these wings around. Make sure they're cooking evenly. Also get our buffalo sauce on there. Get our heating up. And maybe five to seven minutes. We've got a good heat going here by the looks of things. We keep losing wings. I should have brought them tongs. All that stuff and you're going to forget something. That buffalo sauce, nice and hot and rich from the uh, butter. You can do one of a couple of different things with your wings. You can either baste them on the grill, or if you want, if you like it hot, just give them a good dunk. And your buffalo sauce. Mm. Now I must say, I am looking forward to this. This has been uh, quite a labour out here today. At least the rain uh, kind of stopped a bit. So just going to cut off a couple of these ribs. And uh, let's have a little look-see. So there we go, the meat coming off the bone there. You know they say about good barbecue, if it ain't all down you, it ain't no good. Well, let's try out these, these wings. Cooked perfectly, beautiful. That initial slow cook really helps keep them uh, nice and soft. The flat, I'm probably not going to be able to do it because I kind of very roughly butchered them, but you can twist the inner bones and they usually just slide out and that should leave, with, leave you with just the meat. Oh, see this one's broke. I'm just making a mess now. I think that's all the bone out there. Extra dip of the hot sauce. And then you just got pure meat. I don't know how I forgot it, but there's the uh, blue cheese dip with some celery, of course. And that is ideal for your chicken. Oh, look at that. Not one to toot my own horn, but that was very good. One of the best things I've done out here so far. Thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that one, I certainly did, it's probably still all around my face. <laughs> it was absolutely delicious but a hell of a lot of work. There's a lot you didn't see there, the fire took ages to get going, it obviously all took a lot of time to cook. Um, much appreciated if you do share the video, it's not something I usually ask you guys to do, but if you do share it on your Facebook, your Twitter, 
yeah, camping forums, whatever. It helps the videos do well, and this one was a lot of effort. <laughs> so, uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. And uh, until then, stay safe. Goodbye.